In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the VBA type mismatch error. This is the most common error in VBA, and knowing how to fix it will save you a lot of wasted time and frustration. We will look at what exactly is a type mismatch error and what are the causes. We will also look at different examples so you can see the many ways that the type mismatch error occurs. So what should you do to prevent type mismatch errors in your code? We will cover that too. You will see how to write code to easily handle the type mismatch errors when they occur. Now if you like this video then please click on the like button below and if you would like to get notified of my upcoming videos then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Now make sure to download the source code for this video from the description below. It is all the examples used in this video plus fully documented code. Now let's get started by looking at what a type mismatch error is. If we run our code and it finds a type mismatch error, then VBA will display a dialog that says runtime error 13 type mismatch. So what is a type mismatch error? A type mismatch error occurs when we try and place a value in a variable, but that value is not compatible with that variable. So let's look at a real world example for a moment. Imagine you're in a country which has two pin sockets and you are trying to use a three pin plug. Now obviously this plug cannot be used with this type of socket. And so this is very similar in VBA. Some types are not compatible with others, so we cannot use them together. And if we try, VBA will give us back an error. So let's look at the common causes of the type mismatch error in VBA itself. We're going to start with the most simple type mismatch error that you will encounter. You can see on my screen here, what we have is a total variable declared as a long integer. And just to be clear, the long integer is a numeric type. We place the number 45 in the total variable and then we print it to the immediate window. When we run the code, you'll see that it prints out 45 to the immediate window. Now if we were to make 45 into a string by putting quotes around it like this, well this will still work because VBA knows how to convert a number in a string into a number. But if we actually have something like the letter A in the string, then VBA will display the type mismatch error. It could be possible that VBA could convert this value into a number and ignore the letter, but it's much better for us if it gives us an error. If we're not made aware of this problem, then this error could cause issues further in our application. If you look at the code here, we see a slightly different way that the type mismatch error will occur. What we are doing here is declaring a variable, placing a value in it, and then passing it to a sub as a parameter. This sub will then print the value to the immediate window. When we run the code, you can see the result in the immediate window. So now if we change the value we passed to be a string instead of a number, we get the type mismatch error. A second way we can get a type mismatch error is if we pass the string variable by mistake. We declare a string variable and then we pass it to this sub. When the code runs, we get the type mismatch error. So we've seen the different ways that a string causes a type mismatch error. Now let's look at some other causes of this error in VBA. A quick pause to tell you about the Excel VBA Handbook course. Are you struggling to build VBA applications? Do you find it difficult to get good information on how to create real world VBA code? Is it a struggle every time you try to create a VBA application, no matter how simple it is? Well, the Excel VBA Handbook course teach us how to build real-world Excel VBA applications from scratch. Unlike most courses, you won't be overwhelmed with information and left to figure out how to put it all together. Instead, you'll be taken step-by-step -step through 10 Excel VBA applications with every concept explained. Once you start working through VBA applications, you'll be amazed how quickly your VBA skills increase. So check out the VBA Handbook course at theexcelvbahandbook.com and the link can also be found in the description below the video. Placing a text in a number variable is the most common cause of the type mismatch error. And it often occurs when you read from a cell on a spreadsheet that has a string instead of a number. This can happen because you either read the wrong cell or because the value in the cell was changed by mistake. So say for example we've got a sheet data and we're reading the value from cell A1 in that sheet. The value in cell is 100. When we run the code, it writes out the value to the immediate window as we would expect. But imagine a user comes along and changes 100 to text by accidentally putting A at the end of it. Now when we run the code, we get a type mismatch error. 
This is the most common way that a type mismatch error occurs in Excel VBA. And there is a simple way of writing code to handle this scenario when it happens. So let's look at that right now. When reading from cells, there is always the possibility that we get a type mismatch error. So how do we handle this in our code? It's not feasible for us to check every cell as we read from it. This would make the code run very slow and it would mean that we'd have to add extra lines of code which would make our code very bloated indeed. The way we handle it is by using simple error handling. Let's have a look at an example. On our worksheet we have some simple data. We use VBA to read through the sales data and then if the volume is greater than 40 we print the result to the immediate window. So if we run the code you can see that the results were written to the immediate window as we expected. Now I'll change the value here so it's no longer a valid number. When we run the code now, we get a type mismatch error. We could put something in here, so we could write a line of code to see if the cell value equals an error. But if we do this, we will end up with bloated and inefficient code. What we need to do instead is add error handling to our code like this. We put the line on error go to at the top of our sub, and then if there's an error, it will go to the error handling section. So we create our section here using eh. So when an error occurs, the code jumps here. If there's no error, then the code just continues as normal. In the error handling section, we then check for the type mismatch error. And if it occurs, then we do something. So what we normally do is display a message and tell the user that there is an error at a particular point. So we run the code again, and you can see it now says invalid data, and it says the cell where the data has the problem. So this is a very efficient way of dealing with the type mismatch error. So instead of the code stopping on the line, what this does is tells the user what the problem is and allows them to fix it. So let's have a look now at some other ways that the type mismatch error can occur. VBA is very clever when it comes to dates. It can handle any of these dates that you see on the screen. However, there's some things that even VBA cannot do. Any of the following date types will cause a type mismatch error if we try and convert them to a date. Now if you have a problem with the date, then check that it is in a valid format. One thing that can cause a date type mismatch error is having the month in a different language. If we are using English in our region settings and we try to read August in a different language, then VBA will not recognize it. So this is a common error and one to watch out for. A subtle cause of the type mismatch error is when we read from a cell and that cell has an error. Let's look at an example. We're reading the value from cell B2 in the worksheet. When we run the code, we get 25 as expected. If the cell B2 has an error like this, then we will get a type mismatch error when we try to read from the string. So let's run the code and you see that we got the type mismatch error. Now, if you have the type mismatch error, you can always check the type and the value by dropping the cell into the watch window. Now you can see what the type and the value are, and you can see that we have an error. In VBA, we have many different types of objects. Objects are things like workbooks, worksheet, ranges, charts, tables, and so on. If we create a variable that is of a certain type and set that variable to a different type, then we get a type mismatch error. In this code here, we have created a worksheet variable called my worksheet. Now, if we assign this to be any worksheet, then the code will work fine. However, if we set it to a different object type, the code will give an error. Here we set my worksheet to be a workbook, and you can see that we now get the type mismatch error. We will get the same error if we attempt to pass workbook as a parameter when it is expecting a worksheet. In this example, we run the code and you can see we get the type mismatch error here. A very common type mismatch error occurs when we use arrays with range. If you look at the worksheet, you can see your sales data. Now reading the data from the worksheet can get very slow when we're dealing with a lot of data. To make our code run faster, we can place the data in an array and then read through the array. If you check the code here, you can see that we're reading from the range to an array and then writing out the first value to the immediate window. 
All is good so far. There is a very subtle type mismatch error that can occur if we've only got one cell in the range. So let's change our range to one cell. Now when we run the code, we get the type mismatch error. The problem is that there is one cell in the range and VBA doesn't convert it to an array. Instead, it converts it to a single data type like a string or a long. When we try to treat this data type like an array, we then end up getting a type mismatch error. So again, this is a very subtle type of error and it might have caught you out on more than one occasion. In this video, we looked at the different ways that the type mismatch error can occur. Now, sometimes it's not obvious at all what's causing the type mismatch error. So I hope this video helped you to solve the type mismatch error problem that you were having. Now, let me know in the comments if you've had a lot of trouble with type mismatch errors before and how you dealt with them. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button below and the bell icon beside it. Now, don't forget, in the description below, you can download the source code for this video and it has all the examples fully documented on the type mismatch errors and how to solve them.